Good morning, everyone. Um, it's fantastic to be back for those that I haven't met. My name is Kenji, and I'm a product manager on the Chrome team, and I lead some of our web AI efforts, in particular built-in AI. And over the past year, my team has been shipping and collaborating with many of you, external and internal partners. And most importantly, we've been listening. And through all this conversation we've had, it became crystal clear that we had a major challenge. And today, I want to name that challenge and start talking about how we can work together to address this through a playbook. So that challenge is essentially this big disconnect that we have, where as a community, our input signal for AI interest is pegged. We are creating amazing AI demo tapes full of energy and potential. But then when we try to dub that demo into production, there are like a few things that get in the way. And so necessarily the signal drops. And so because of that, um, we end up not shipping as much as we think we should, right? We have a lot of like interesting ideas, but things get in the way. And this signal loss between our demos and what we end up shipping is due to, I think, a playbook vacuum. It's the faulty wiring between the promise of our demos and the harsh reality of production. And so our mission today is to start fixing this wiring. All right, so filling that vacuum starts with a map. From a bird's eye view, we can see that any AI experience on the web essentially lives in one of three worlds. As we've seen, there is cloud AI, which is great because you have access to those like immense like power and state-of-the-art models, and that's great for heavier tasks. It has some downside, right? You have to pay per inference, it has a cost, and also sometimes privacy trade-offs that you need to think about. Then there is web AI, our focus today. Here you have zero cost inference, everything is free, it runs on the device. You have absolute privacy, nothing gets sent to, the, to a server. And you also have nimble offline experience because everything is happening right on your device. And then finally, you have hybrid AI, which lets you route task to balance the power and reach of the cloud with the efficiency and privacy of the client side. So now let's zoom into the client side world. When we zoom in, I think every developer is choosing their starting point among, along this spectrum. It's a classic trade-off. On the one hand, you have the simplicity and convenience of a paved road, where you can quickly develop and launch new AI features. And then on the other hand, you have the open field, where you have more control, but it does require more investment on your part. Um, when you do that, you have access to like, more custom models. You can do more things than you could uh, if you were to choose the paved road. And when I say um, I, I kind of like lead some of our web AI efforts, there is the built-in AI effort, there is also web GPU, web NN. And so that's how we think about this whole space. Like what can we do to help developers across this spectrum? So let me show, show you in more details. So the first path is this paved road. This is clearly the path of simplicity and speed. And it's designed for the builder who wants to uh, ship valuable AI feature without having to worry about the AI infrastructure or the stack. It's meant to meet you where you are, whether you're working in a CMS or willing to write a very simple JavaScript snippet, or maybe using one of the popular AI framework. This on-ramp experience is backed by high-level built-in AI APIs, where the entire underlying stack is a browser-managed platform. We handle the complexity, so that you can focus on your product, not the AI infrastructure. All right, the second pass is the open field. This is the pass of maximum flexibility and control, and it's essentially designed for two key groups. It's for the builders that need to deploy their, all, their, their own custom models, or maybe some people that want total control over the whole AI stack. It's taken, this is also the workshop for the builder in this room, the folks that build frameworks, tools, so that they can expand the scope of the paved road by providing easy to use solution. And this is typically done through low level APIs like WebGPU, WebNN, WebAssembly, because that gives you access to um, GPU and PU hardware, right? So you can use to accelerate AI uh, inferencing. 
So this is where you can build the next generation of tools that is going to extend the payload so that more people can, I, uh, can deploy web AI feature without having to be AI experts. All right, and when you put all of that together, it, you get this complete map, which I believe is a Korean platform because it's designed to meet developers where they are, whether you are a new a developer in the AI, a web AI space or maybe an expert. There is everything you need uh, to get started. All right. Okay, so now that we have our map, um, let's write a few more pages. And I think a good playbook starts with some strong principle. And today I want to highlight two that I think are game changer. The first principle is economic. For years, the dominant model for powerful AI has been the server-side model. And when you think about it, uh, bear with me, <laughs> it's a lot like um, an arcade machine, right? Back then, like many arcade cabinets had the most powerful hardware and had the greatest game. Uh, but it was a catch because every time you wanted to play, um, you had, or maybe someone had, to pay for that, right? So every time you want to run something, an inference, you have to pay for it. That is the server-side model. All right. And because of that, you can't really let your user freely experiment, right? You always have this uh, budget in the back of your mind. You can't just let people click on generate something with AI because that's going to cost you a lot if you do so. And so you can also not deploy always on proactive feature because you always have this like budget in mind. You need to limit how often that happens. And if you look at the client side AI, I think it completely flips the model. And again, bringing that back to the like arcade uh, analogy, I think it's this idea of like bringing the arcade home. So uh, some people may know, but way back then, <laughs> like home console meant a big drop in quality. And it took uh, a game console like Neo Geo, which promised and delivered arcade quality experience at home. And I think today, we are exactly in this place. The sort of like hardware that your users have and increasingly have can run um, AI experience that were considered state of the art a couple of years ago on the server side. And the thing that's interesting to observe is that when your users get this hardware from there on, everything is free, right? There is no cost associated to the inference. And this marginal cost per play going to zero is essentially uh, the key unlocker for what I'm going to talk about next. All right, this essentially unlocks a fundamentally different way of building web AI features. Server side is by necessity reactive, right? Because you have this budget. You wait for the user to press a button and then because of that, you are interrupting their flow and they are taking a gamble on whether or not this AI feature is going to help them. But with client side AI, you can be more proactive. And just for this demo, I've added this like little spinning type icon just to show you what's going on. But essentially, as the user is writing their blog post, you can run on the client um, a headline generation like AI feature. And when the user clicks on the title, you can select the best one so far and make sure that it's pre-selected so that when you do this, this kind of like proactive AI UX pattern, it didn't force a gamble. If the title is good, the user can just use it. If it's not exactly what they had in mind, they can just override it, just like they were about to do anyway. So I want to have you think about those kind of like proactive UX pattern that doesn't get in a way. That being said, this new power is also a huge temptation. The temptation is to take this new AI hammer and see every problem as an end. And kind of like a mindset that was also perfectly captured by a certain expert in chaos theory. Uh, <laughs> kind of like we were so busy to ask if we could AI for it that we forgot to ask if we should. And this mindset is the trap, right? And I want to introduce a second principle, which I call the, um, the art for the applied AI. And when I say art, it's because we need to explore the space and define what works and what doesn't work. And hopefully we can move from art to science at some point. All right, so let's be clear about what this trap looks like in practice. It looks like this, the AI feature trap. 
This is the biggest mistake we see developers fall into. They start with building loud, separate AI experience that interrupt the user's main quest. And that's playing on hard mode, which is an interesting choice to, to make. Instead, I think the better approach is to be subtle and helpful. The goal is really to augment the workflows your users already have so that you have AI that disappears in the, into the background to just make the product better. So for instance, it's not a demanding chatbot where you have to express what you need. It could be a show summary button right next to the reviews, right? That's a very easy uh, to understand example. Or even better, it could be proactive highlights, maybe the product description, based on what the AI has learned about what the user is potentially interested in, right? And that could be done by looking at which product the user is spending time on, trying to find what are the common points between the, the product that the user is spending more time on versus not. Um, and you can also introduce like easier, uh, sorry, low friction feedback loops to get that understanding closer to what the user has in mind. Like typing is not the only option here. And this is where you would find the most valuable and durable value, being helpful, not just noble. So those are our first two principles. But a playbook is important takes a village. And so this next chapter is about making that building together seem tangible with a few more talks at this summit. So we've designed the track as a clear journey. It started with my intro to set the stage. And then Jana will give you a framework for discovery identifying those interesting opportunities where AI could be useful. After that, Yuliko is going to provide the proof with real-world case studies from our partners. And once you have the why and the what, you reach your destination. You can choose the how. And for that, you will have Thomas Steiner, who is going to guide you through uh, the paved road. And then after that, uh, for the enablers and experts, Thomas Nadelstadt is going to walk you through the open field. Each of these are parts of crucial chapters for the Slack playbook that we'll be all writing together. Speaking of which, this is the start of a long but hopefully rewarding journey, because a real playbook isn't written by, uh, in a single day or by a single team. It's going to take time for us to do that. It's built through trying, failing, learning, and sharing. So here's how you can start contributing to the playbook today. So, before, um, before that, I want to be very clear about that. <laughs> what I mean by playbook is not like a single physical, physical playbook, although I wouldn't mind having that on my coffee table. No, what I'm talking about is really uh, this idea of a living, breathing collection of our shared knowledge. So it could be anything from the case studies we write and share online, or solution guides to like specific problem have, uh, people have when they try to productionize AI features, or it could be those like patterns that I talked about, like taking something that seems good on the paper, but also validating the UX pattern with actual users. And obviously, all the talks we do to raise awareness inspire people to build interesting AI features. So every contribution that is focused on valuable AI is a new page to this book and a learning opportunity for us to write the next chapters. So that is the mission ahead of us to fill that vacuum together. The Web AI playbook is open, and I invite you all to write it. You can start your uh, journey today by exploring the tech, maybe the built-in AI tech. And if you want to write your first page, you have a good excuse to do that today by joining the Chrome AI Challenge, where you can put some of those APIs through paces, and also you can compete for prizes. So with that, thank you, and let's write this playbook together. Thank you.